Okay, welcome. I'm here today with Dr. Joseph Smith, the Executive Director of Long Beach Reach. And uh, first of all, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for Forgive having me. me. Um, can you characterize the, the drug problem, uh, both here in Long Beach and, and on Long Island, uh, in the wake of the uh, deaths of, in December and more recently in February? Well, certainly, uh, Dave, the, uh, the recent deaths and the deaths that we've experienced in this community um, over the years are, are a tragedy, um, something that, you know, always uh, it's, it's a painful, horrific experience, and the hearts go out to the families of those people who have uh, suffered losses uh, to whether it's uh, heroin or whether it's other uh, drugs uh, of choice that uh, that uh, had the same outcome. Um, it's a horror, and, and we can only imagine um, what that's like for any family member or loved one to, to suffer through. Um, this is a, unfortunately, this is a national epidemic. Um, it's something that affects every community, every socioeconomic group. Uh, it knows no boundaries, uh, and it is uh, something of serious, serious concern. Uh, that is, unfortunately, a growing problem that, um, as a matter of public policy, we have not really wrapped our hands around and done the things that need to be done to uh, to turn the tide, and that's the that's the real tragedy of this. Um, so, so what are some of the What are some of the biggest challenges and hurdles that you face in trying to address this? Well, there are many. Um, it starts, I believe, um, with uh, uh, our society's uh, propensity for believing that um, pain or discomfort uh, can be uh, resolved with a quick fix. Um, that starts in the earliest years. It starts with uh, uh, everything that we see on television and everything that we see in, in uh, advertisements and commercials. Uh, that the answer, the solution, if you feel pain, if you are suffering, if you are hurting, there's a pill to take. There's, uh, there's something that you can do quickly to take care of that and to feel better. Um, we've grown accustomed to that. And the truth of the matter is that, that uh, to large measure, th that does work. Um, it may work for a very short time, but it does work. Um, and so part of what we're up against is, is that, that mentality, that expectation. Um, and so when the going gets rough, whether it's emotionally, interpersonally, um, or professionally, or economically, um, the expectation is that somehow there's going to be a quick and ready solution, and we look for that solution. And unfortunately, um, one of the ways in which we can look is a drug uh, usage. Um, drugs are available. They're available because there's a demand for them. They're available because it is economically profitable uh, for people. And um, so those drugs and because are, it feels good, and and because it feel, the demand is there because it feels good. So if if that's the overall problem and what we're up against, what are some of the uh, ways that we can address the problem uh, for the people who need it most? Well, I think we have to first of all we have to recognize um, as professionals, as family members, as a community we have to recognize that there are no quick fixes, there are no quick solutions, there are no ready-pat, ready-made answers, that we have to struggle, we have to work at figuring out what needs to be done, and then we have to do the hard and deliberate work to make that happen. So okay. I think that, uh, you know, it's a comprehensive approach that has to be taken. Yes, there is a role for the for law enforcement and criminal justice efforts, sure. there's certainly a role um, that, that needs to be assumed. But that's not the answer. That is only a piece of the puzzle. Um, the fact of the matter it's is... It's part of the answer. It's part of the answer. And if we have people from other places or from here, wherever they're from, who are selling drugs uh, to kids or, or to adults, uh, and they can be apprehended and put behind bars and punished according to the law. That that's important. Absolutely, and and uh, and we need to make sure that we continue to devote our efforts in in very significant ways to to meet that part of the problem. 
Um, but we also but have people who want to get high, and they're going to well, get high. That's right. And there are people who are going to be looking to make a profit. Um, you know, when uh, this is this is big business. You know, drug sales uh, is big business uh, on the large scale, on the international scale. And despite the fact that, that this nation and other nations around the world devote billions of dollars every year at interdiction efforts, we have not stemmed the flow of uh, drugs into this country substantially. And, and there continues to be a ready supply uh, of drugs available. But, you know, it the demand doesn't begin with the growers in Afghanistan or Colombia. Right. Um, right. If they had no one to sell to, then it would, you know. That's if, right. If nobody wanted to do drugs, I mean, the fact that, you know, I may not be interested in drugs, the people who are growing poppies right. in Afghanistan That's have right. no impact. And of course, we know that one of the, uh, one of the reasons that there has been a, an upsurge in the use of street drugs like heroin is the result of opiate addiction that has taken place as a result of uh, pharmaceutical uh, availability of uh, prescription drugs, pain relief drugs, uh, opiates that, that are available, uh, that uh, have been over-prescribed, uh, uh, and that have been too readily available to people uh, who, and I'm not saying that there isn't a need. Clearly, there are people who mm -hmm. are in legitimate pain um, whose pain can be eased and, and relieved by the appropriate use of, of medications uh, and responsible use of medications. But there clearly has been an over-reliance on medications. Again, going back to that expectation that pain can be relieved quickly and, eas and easily. And so um, what we have is a, a generation uh, that has been able to, uh, and it's really, it's not generational, this, this spans all ages, uh, but that we have people who have become accustomed to having their pain relieved by a prescription medication that they have become dependent upon. As we have seen some of the horrors that have resulted as a result of the uh, addiction of mm -hmm. people to these medications mm -hmm. and the reliance on these medications and some of the problems that have occurred, the, the deaths in pharmacies, uh, for example. We have, as a society, uh, we have enacted legislation, we have tightened up uh, the availability of, of some of these drugs uh, and the overuse of some of these medications uh, and the um, inappropriate ways in which people have um, done doctor shopping and had multiple prescriptions. We put into place sure, some, sure. some practices, the iStop program, for example, so that uh, 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 pharmacies and, and uh, practitioners, uh, prescribers, have to check to see whether or not uh, a patient is receiving this medication from two or three or four different doctors and having it filled in four or five different... Doctor shopping. Uh, yeah, or four or five different pharmacies. So we've tightened up, which is good, um, but we have now got a, an army of people who are addicted who are dependent on these drugs, now with the lack of availability that they had previously to get these drugs, right. quote unquote, legally, right. and we have... Right. We've, clamped down, we've on, clamped down on the on Oxycontin, that. That's and the Percocet, and some right. of that stuff, so people turn to heroin. So now we have this available, cheap, very, very powerful, lethal substance. Uh, this is the most powerful substance uh, that, uh, that uh, has been available on the streets, and it's, it's readily available, and it's accessible, Heroin. and it's cheap. Yeah. It's affordable, and it's available. Okay, so we have these people. As, as a clinician, as someone who, you know, this is what you do, a, a, a successful agency here at REACH, mm -hmm. what do we do with these? How do we address this problem? Well, I think, again, as I started to say before, I think we have to have a comprehensive approach. There is no one answer, and there is no quick solution. What I are some of the what some, are some of the answers? Certainly, as I said, I think we have to uh, we have to continue the efforts in terms of criminal justice efforts, law enforcement efforts. There's an appropriate um, place for that, right? We but need here, to I mean, that. At, at, in terms of what do we do uh, here? We we need to be focusing on prevention efforts um, from youngest ages to help to replace the message that. A pill is the answer, or a quick fix solution is the answer. 
with the notion that we have to work at finding solutions. We have to be able to uh, offer kids a sense of hope and opportunity. We have to offer kids pathways to success okay. that don't involve uh, drugs or alcohol. Um, we have to make sure that for those people who do have uh, a need uh, for help, that help is available. You know, one of the, the difficulties we have in, in this society is that we have, while we have devoted billions of dollars to interdiction efforts and billions of dollars to criminal justice and prosecution efforts, and I'm not saying that those efforts aren't necessary, but we have devoted a mere fraction of that to prevention, education, and treatment efforts. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, mm -hmm. that is criminal. That we are not devoting as a society the resources to make sure that when people need help, they can receive help. And we have co-conspirators in those criminal acts. We have a pharmaceutical industry that has profited and has not contributed. It's in their vested uh, interest to sell drugs. That's, that's what they make drugs, they sell drugs. For the most part, uh, or for a, a large part, I don't know if it's most or not, but f for a very large part, it's the people who need them and for who it's appropriate, uh, from whom it's appropriate to have these drugs. But it's also, to some, some extent, of that part profit, of the problem. Some of that profit ought to be turned into uh, the prevention. availability of prevention, education, and treatment. Um, and, and that ought to be something that is... Uh, that is required. And I guess um, we have politicians who have pressure from all different directions to limit their budgets, to lower taxes sure. and so forth, sure. and, and yet part of their job is to help protect these, these uh, residents, young residents. Well, we also have an insurance industry that um, is another co-conspirator in the problems that we, we face because we have, uh, all too often, we tell people who seek help that fine, you, you, you need help, mm -hmm. but we're not going to reimburse for that service. Or we have to have you fail first in a lower level, less expensive level of care before we will pay for your hospitalization or your stay in a residential treatment program or other somewhat more costly treatment. So, so they so may look at, the, at the, the patient and say, or the client and say, uh, are they really on enough drugs, or are they really sick enough, or is, do they have a, what's really we consider a substantial substance abuse problem that we should be paying for it? Right. And, uh, you know, but you have professionals, professionals like uh, members of our staff mm -hmm. and staff in, in outpatient clinics clinicians all, yeah. over, all over the county and the state and the country um, who are saying, this person needs a higher level of care. They need detoxification, or they need to be in a residential treatment program, or a day treatment program, or other treatment modalities, that the insurance company says, well, have they had uh, uh, two failed efforts at uh, outpatient, uh, traditional outpatient care? All right, so now you have to first have the person suffer more, fail more, perhaps get turned off to the notion of treatment and not seek treatment any further, which of course saves the insurance companies the money because perhaps they don't die. have to reimburse. They could and die. ultimately they can die and some have. And that of course is the is the tragedy and why I, I, I characterize that as being a co conspirator in the uh, epidemic that we're that we're struggling with. And again, this is not unique to Long Beach, this is not unique to New York State. This is a national problem. And it needs a strong public policy advocacy effort to turn this around. Yes. And that becomes part of a comprehensive approach. Yes, there are things that we can do locally, and we should. We should advocate for and work collaboratively to give positive messages to, kid, to kids, messages to young adults, that there is hope, there is opportunity, that you don't have to turn to drugs or alcohol. And that you can talk to someone and, and that, you and that if you're really yourself. overwhelmed I remember when I was in school uh, we I had a guidance counselor who was just wonderful and she would listen and she was interested in how was I doing or was I stressed out and I know that uh, for some of the young people that I know today and I, I've spoken to about this issue um, they are aware that there are counselors compassionate counselors mm -hmm. at school 
uh, who, and in fact, I think some of them may be affiliated uh, yes, with we Long have, Beach Reach. Yes, we have uh, uh, counselors, uh, therapists who we employ, who we deploy to the Long Beach schools. Um, we have a worker in the middle school and a worker and workers in the high school every day of the week, uh, five days a week, every day of the school year. Um, and they are available uh, and do work with, uh, over the course of the year, hundreds of youngsters um, to provide that counseling, that support, that guidance. You know, drugs are very powerful and they're very effective. They do work and we have to tell the truth about this. Drugs do work. Unfortunately, they work all too well, and we become dependent on them. Right. And they then, take of over. course, they take over, and they become right. uh, maladaptive. You're not taking the drug. The drug is taking you. Correct. Yeah. And so, but there isn't, uh, it's hard to compete with that because it feels good. How do you compete with something that feels good, that takes away pain, and gives you relief, whether it's relief from anxiety or relief from depression, relief from a sense of hopelessness or a sense of uh, failure. How do you compete with that? There is only one thing I know that competes with that. What? And that is a positive human relationship, an interaction with someone that cares about you and that can work with you and build on that relationship to help you to find a pathway that can make you feel good that can make you feel right. successful and accomplished and capable. Those are the pathways, the alternate pathways, to a sense of well-being. So I think it's, it's very important for um, people, especially uh, younger people, but older people as well, to know that, first of all, yes, the drugs feel good, but eventually they don't. And eventually uh, pr uh, the problems come back, uh, they're masking the problems, and other problems show up. Dependency on drugs, financial problems, oh, the list uh, goes on. mental health problems. Absolutely. I mean, drugs can really, you know, after the initial feel good, eventually can start to really ruin and will eventually ruin your life if you're using them. Well, and I just want to just make a point in that I think it's really important for kids at school, and I know some of them who have taken advantage of, of your counselors and have been very helped, to know that there is a place to turn, there are people who will listen to you and who will be compassionate and it's very easy to say, ah, oh, they don't care, they're, you know, they're not paying attention. They do care and they do pay attention and they will help and it can change everything and I think that's really important for, for young people to hear that because too often we speak, you know, you're a clinician and you're an executive director and you you know, you, you're not always with a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old who is just so overwhelmed that they can't cope. And I think it's really important for them and for their parents to, to, to know that it's, it's important that they experience compassion, compassionate uh, ear and, and, uh, and to be heard and understood and that that can turn the whole thing around, whether it's from a parent, a, a clinician, or, or, or both. Absolutely. And I, that's, a, that's a very powerful antidote, in my opinion, uh, to, the, um, to the scourge of, of drug addiction. Um, but the fact is that this is a multifaceted approach. It's a comprehensive approach that has to be taken if we really want to make a difference. You know, we, we bandy about terms like a war on drugs. Well, this is the only war that I think has been fought without weapons. Um, the fact of the matter is that the resources to support uh, chemical dependency prevention, education, and treatment programs has been whittled away over the years. So as the demand has grown, the need for service has increased, we've seen the resources either remain static or decreased. And that's true in New York State and it's true nationally. The fact is that uh, only the estimate is that less than one in ten people who need help get help. Some of that is a lack of awareness. Some of it is a lack of uh, direction to get people to where help exists. And some of it is that there are not sufficient resources being provided to make that help as readily available as it ought to be and as it needs to be. So I think one of the strategies, if we talk about well, what do we need to do to, to make a difference, one of the things we need to do is to make sure that our public policy officials understand that we have an expectation 
not for quick fix solutions, but an, expecta an expectation for professionally available resources to meet the needs of our citizens. Right. And for that to be ongoing. And for that to be ongoing. And the problem is ongoing. The drugs no, don't show right. up on Tuesday and leave on Thursday. No, this is an not. ongoing problem. It's a problem that is not going away. It's, it's uh, growing and the people who profit from it uh, in a lot of different facets are finding new ways to, um, to profit. Absolutely.